Hello and welcome back to Speak. So for today's episode, we have the lovely Fiona O'Donnell joining us. And Fiona, I'm going to throw up to you for a quick intro and tell us a bit about yourself and the topic you want to cover. And then I'm going to throw to Crystal to go back to what we were talking about before we started recording. Yeah, because yeah. we were on a fucking roll. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so hello everybody. Uh, my name is Fiona O'Donnell. I work for an organization called Jacobs Engineering. Um, probably one of the only things we don't do is make biscuits um, or crackers. We are a, I suppose, look at traditional engineering um, organization, but we, we, you know, we pretty much do everything, um, service provider, um, pretty much do everything. And I sit on their health safety team. So I've been with Jacobs for the last 17 years, 17 coming on 18 years, and um, started off in the Irish operations before moving to the European part of the business where I was head of safety there for a number of years. Um, and more recently, about 18 months ago, moved into a global role. Um, so I support our health and safety wellbeing strategy right across the globe. We've got just under 60,000 staff working everywhere and um, doing all kinds of weird and, and wonderful things. Um, I am married. I have got three girls, uh, 13, 11 and an absolute firecracker called Ada who turned eight last week um, who definitely keeps me on my toes um, yeah and I live just outside Dublin um, in a place called Leakslip County Kildare. Amazing 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 well it's lovely to have you on um, and as Elisa said we were cracking on with our conversation I had to put a pin in <laughs> because your question so your topic that you want to cover today was is safety a mental game that was your question yeah. for the speak wasn't it yeah and I think it's so interesting that our first proper introduction to each other we naturally start going into the mental game that we have to play constantly um and yeah. to catch the listener up some of the things we were talking about is the natural masking when someone says how are you um and actually the complete carnage um, of life day-to-day -day life that we have to deal with and you're not really meant to bring any of that stuff to the fore are you you're supposed to sort of seamlessly deal with it um and I can't even remember the point that we just said let's put a pin what I can't even remember what we were saying just before we said let's put a pin in it and carry on but um I think one of your points was there's a lot of masking and you yeah. try to be as actually honest as you can. One of the cool things that we did say, and I think I want to say to everyone out there juggling everything, there's no such thing. I don't think, and I think you agreed, Fiona, there's no such thing as balance. No. Somebody loses at some point and you basically risk assess who can take it. That's absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so abso um... absolutely. And it's, and it's, that's pretty much how I've lived the last kind of, certainly the last 12, 13 years since I, since I started having kids. And look, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll be very honest in saying that I, I, I work for an amazing organization who, you know, has allowed me to grow personally and professionally over the last um, number of years while, whilst I've built a career and, and had my kids. However, um, I suppose it, they they are really hard yards and and they you know they don't get any easier i think the the point that we put a pin in it was i was about to to tell you about a conversation i had with a friend of mine who is kind of at the at the earlier stage of having her kids her kids are a bit smaller than than mine um and she it was only a couple of weeks ago and she said to me you know fiona am i ever going to feel normal again <laughs> am i ever going to feel normal again and i didn't even hesitate and i just said no <laughs> you won't ever feel normal again um and 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 you know sometimes sometimes you're in your groove and things are working out and it all feels fine and then other times it just isn't yeah. and you know going back to the question that we posed around the safety and mental game um I, I, decisions that we make and, and what we expect our people to make and our staff to make has to be based on your preparedness um, when faced with risk. And I think, you know, people have got all sorts of crap going on in their lives. Yeah. So the days of expecting our people to come to work and make sound decisions and not take into account the fact that they've got all this rubbish 
that they've apparently left at the door. It's just, you know, I think from an organizational perspective, it's just not good enough to expect that anymore. You know, we expect people to come in, work to 100% of their ability, 100% of the time, and and, and, and they just can't. They, you know, they... a real, I mean, the minute you boil that down to the real request, that's not even possible. No. Um, and actually, no. it really dovetails off of the last episode we did with Chloe Hughes, where we we're talking, just even talking about women going through menopause. Yep. At a certain point, it takes them that long to get to, let's say, the C-suite or an executive level. They hit menopause and they are expected to deliver at the exact same pace, time, space, with clarity. When they've got brain fog, they're breaking out in hot sweats. And we're expecting so yeah. much from people, like you say, that have got their own stuff going on. It's life. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And I look, you know, it's probably easier for me to say this sitting sitting here working for an organization like Jacobs you know we're 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 massive a huge corporate machine and you know we have we have a lot to give in terms of support for our staff but even for smaller organizations like this is just about I think caring for your people and 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 trying to develop that or foster that culture within the organization where people first of all know each other and understand mm-hmm. each other and then just care about each other and mm-hmm. the whole hybrid working model just frightens the life out of me you know um we moved to hybrid working and, and I've been at pains to try and influence within our organization with regard to getting people back in the office because you lose that a bit like if you don't know somebody how are you supposed to care about them mm-hmm. you know and we've had a, like we've had a and stories over the last couple of years you know we've we've uh and look we'll talk about it in a little bit some of the stuff that we do at Jacobs but we've had some some amazing stories over the years through our mental health resiliency program um of like real stories of hope you know we did an amazing lady called Rosie Lockley on one of our um calls last year we host these calls every six or seven weeks and we get up to five thousand people dialing into these calls every six or seven weeks so we're talking about stuff that people really want to hear but Rosie was on our call this time last year uh, for World Suicide Prevention Day and she spoke about um having plans in place to take her own life and you know, just harrowing stuff, knew where she was going to stand on the platform, knew what time the train was coming, all, you know, just just harrowing. And she came into the office that day and a couple of things happened. She went into a meeting and at the end of the meeting, somebody said to her, I'm glad you were at the meeting today. You made a real difference to the meeting today. And then she went into the canteen later on and she met somebody and they said to her, it's great to see you in the office. If you're around next week, we'll go for lunch or something like that. But it was it was those just little uh, seemingly innocuous interactions that she had in an office mm. that 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 is the reason why she's here today, you know. And so the whole hybrid working model and if you if you if you like the question we posed around is around uh, mental fortitude, really. Um, if you're not if you're not in an office and you're not building those relationships, how are you going to care enough about somebody to tip them on the shoulder and tell them they're doing something wrong? Or you know, so it's it's yeah, it's an interesting one because I understand why we need to do it, and I also understand the rut that you get stuck in because I'm here in my, you know, attic that we built that we uh, got converted just after COVID uh, because I knew I was going to be working at home and it's a beautiful space. But I can tell you now, there are some mornings that I come up that stairs to open this door and I just, you know, I don't want to be here. (laughs) Like, I don't want to come into this space. I want to get out of my house. But then you're on this cycle because, like, I have to go to London tomorrow and the thoughts of actually having to get up, like, you know put on a decent clothes put on a bit of makeup I'll have to blow dry my hair in the morning like I'm actually getting anxiety from that even though once I'm there and I'm gone and I'm meeting real human beings in the flesh I'll be like yes you know and why don't I do this more and I'm getting out of the house more and whatever but so it's that like and I'm really aware of that yeah so for for somebody that's because because you know I'm in this profession and, and I and I'm passionate about it and I I research it and I think about it and I talk about it and I'm, and I'm and I'm all engulfed in it. But like for somebody that's not, I can see very easily how you may um that may go negatively against you, you know. 
Yeah, you need, I mean, that's the whole thing about purpose and passion, isn't it? Like, it carries you through on the worst days. So if you don't have a natural passion for what you're doing and it, you aren't, and I think it's absolutely right. And it, it, I think I saw a snippet of Simon Sinek saying, we're not mature enough to, we're still not mature enough as, as organisations to understand that some people don't want the career role. They just want to come in, do the job and finish at five so they can go and have a life. And if you yeah. are the person that is now working from home full time and it's a nine to five clock off so I can be home and there isn't the social element and there isn't the, you know, all of that benefit of like you saying being tipped on the shoulder, I can see that being quite lonely. And actually I'm thinking about somebody in particular at the moment that I saw a little while ago looking like they were struggling and spotted them as we were walking around tap them on the shoulder say hey it was like really great to to see you here haven't seen you in ages and the response I got was please don't touch me because I might cry oh, no. um, and and I was like okay you know just like mm. okay yeah no problem so did the rest mm. of the day and then offered them a lift to where they needed to go and on the way said you can just say whatever you need to say in this car you can leave it here you can take it out if you want to you can just say whatever you need to say. Um, and we had a conversation and 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 got to got to the root of some stuff, but a lot of it was around isolation, actually. Yeah. Um, lots and lots of their job job was sort of data entry, spreadsheets, single man band, and they don't have somebody to check in with yeah. constantly. It's not even like the stuff that they do. Like we would sit on meetings with other people all day and be like, God, that was a really heavy day. But those mm-hmm. that are doing manual tasks there isn't yeah. that even. so even worse so I, I totally I, I massively benefit from this situation I get to take my daughter to school every day I'm a single mum so I have to do the the both ends of that and I couldn't survive if we didn't have hybrid working yeah but I absolutely I'm, I'm I love the day where I'm just like okay God, it's going to be a lot to do everything and get into London tomorrow but when I'm there God I love it oh um, yeah yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing like I know tomorrow I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get to be with adults, yeah. not my kids. You know, <laughs> you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna. And no one's gonna ask me to feed them tomorrow. Oh, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> you know. And and I'll be with people that respect me and all of that good stuff. So I know. Look, I know. Once I'm once I'm there, you know, it'll be amazing. But it's it's the grind of getting out the door. Yeah. It's the bloody grind. And you know, just back to that story uh, that you told there about that that lady. I think that organizations have a like they absolutely have have a responsibility to again create that environment where it's okay for her to do that and it's okay for her to reach out but equally that people know that they are allowed to care you know mm-hmm. um and and again we've had we've had so much anecdotal evidence since we launched um 1 million lives within within Jacobs and it was for that very reason it was to it was to show as an organization that we wanted to try and do something a bit more proactive because look, we started off with the men- positive mental health champions. We, you know, we're, we're, we're about eight years down this road. So we started off like everybody else with the positive mental health champion network. Um, and that was because we had somebody on our team that really struggled and, and being pr- really honest, it was, it was quite frustrating because you know, he'd be off his work for things that the rest of us would just kind of shrug our shoulders at and he'd be mm. off for kind of weeks on end. And, you know, when is he coming back? And is he coming back? And then he'd come back. And when he was on his game, he was absolutely amazing. He was brilliant. But then he wasn't. So we kind of had a decision to make as a team. It was like, do we do we get on or get off the bus here? Do we stay ignorant to this? And is Glenn somebody that just comes in and out? Or do we actually... um try and understand this a lot more and he he was brilliant he worked with us we developed uh the training program we rolled that out there was a massive groundswell from it because um people really wanted it so this was back in 2016 and people really wanted it and then that allowed us to go to kind of senior leadership and say look this is there's something special happening here you know and we had all these people scattered in all our offices and they wore a lanyard and it said positive mental health champion and all of a sudden we were getting all this um anecdotal um evidence i suppose back that our people were struggling you know um 
and lovely stories you know people going for coffee together and just having a chat and just 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 taking the whole transactional element out of work you know mm, yeah because you come to work you have a job to do you do your job you interact with people based on your job and then you go home introducing the positive mental health champion network did something outside of people um just doing their jobs they were actually having conversations and then around 2018 we um started to think about doing something proactive because by the time somebody went to a positive mental health champion they needed help or they you know they needed to have a conversation with somebody and it just never quite sat right with us so um paul hendry who is our global vice president um of hse this was his brainchild really um and he connected us with a psychologist out of um perth western australia called peter slocum um, and we worked with her to develop one million lives so um yeah it just has been a huge success for us and so it's a mental health check-in tool um and it's based on the kessler k10 model um, and it measures a number of different areas and then kind of signposts you and gives you tips uh, based on what you've um the rating on your mental health um what's what's really cool about it is it is for we've got we offer it for free to family and friends of our of our staff and you know that was really important to us going back to what we were saying i'm not sure whether the cameras were rolling at this point but um people have all kinds of shit going on in their lives right and we expect people to come to work and perform to, you know 100 percent of their uh, ability 100 percent of the time and that's just impossible to do yeah. you know so we started to think about well look if people have got stuff going on at home and they're caring for um, somebody that is struggling with their mental health that's going to weigh heavily on them so yeah. we need to do something for the family and friends of our of our people so we offered it to for, for as a free resource and that conversation very quickly turned to well hang on a second we are a massive global organization we have we're in we're in nearly every country in the world we have a real responsibility here to give back so we made it open source and um, this is a free tool that can be used by anybody that that um that wants to use it and mm -hmm. um, we advertise it externally we advertise our positive or our sorry our mental health resiliency calls um externally as well um and it's it's really just about us giving back and you know sometimes it's a hard sell because people look at us and go well why on earth would you be giving that away for free? Because, because the let's, catch. yeah, because let, let's face it, there's a lot of people make a lot of money out of yeah, mental health, yeah. an awful yeah. lot of money um, out of mental health. And there's been people like, I'll be really honest with you, there has been some people that have, you know, closed the door in our faces. And there are some people that should have gotten on board with this campaign that, um, the world's biggest mental health check-in i'll talk about that in a second um when we ran that last year there were some organizations that absolutely should have got involved but it was they just didn't want us so we are really clear about this we will this is not something we'll ever commercialize um and we will give the data to anybody that wants data yeah. um you know as an organization coming out covid um we knew that our under 35 age demographic was, was really struggling with social isolation based on the data that we were getting out of one million lives so that allowed us to you know do things like when we were opening up our offices after covid we prioritized getting the under 35s in and that was a really conscious decision like so it wasn't just the hse team or the hr team saying do you know what maybe uh, maybe you know we should get our younger age demographic we never would have made that connection yeah. but we actually were able to go with the data and say mm -hmm. Here's the data. Risk Out of now, this is yeah, what, ab yeah. Ab absolutely. So yeah. we we got them, and, and and you know what? It built up trust in the business because. You know, we put out the message saying under 35s, we care about you and we're going to prioritize you getting back into the offices. See you. What 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 really stopped us in our tracks, though, was um, through the first tranche of the data that we collected um that under 35 age demographic, 52% of people that took the check-in, of our people that took the check-in, said that they'd had suicidal thoughts, 52%. 52% of the demographic you identified? Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah, of the, of, of the people that took the check-in told us that they had had suicide. That, that 
just wow. stopped us in our tracks. And, and, and it was amazing because, again, brought that data to, to our senior leadership mm. and there was no question that we were jumping all over that. So as a business, it allowed us to put suicide prevention training in place and and additional support for line managers, you know, um, and, a, and a mentoring program for that for that younger age demographic. So it no longer was a nice to have. It was a data driven decision and really highlighted and connected the dots, I think, for our leadership to say, right, how people actually are you know mentally is just as important as they are physically and we need to jump all over this you know I think that's the bit that's been missing from the profession actually it is we and I think I've probably said this on a million podcasts so sorry listeners but for me that thing about health being the poor cousin yeah and um we've always you know you get quite a lot of safety directors and people even forget to put health and safety in that title because we forget that health is um, just as important as you, you know, protecting your health is just as important as pr- protecting you from a fractured leg. So we've almost got no chance of then saying not just health, but mental health. So the stuff you can't see, forget occupational asthma, dermatitis, the stuff you can see. We're not even taking that seriously as a profession because we don't really talk about health. We wait until it's too late and someone's got symptoms. We, we and then you're going to talk about the health that no one can see. It's yeah. So I think the fact that you're eight years down this journey, the fact that you can be data driven and the fact that you have chosen not to commercialize that yeah. data set is incredible. Like yeah, it is you guys. Oh, no, it it, it absolutely is. And it's and it's look, we, I, we talked again. I can't remember if the camera was rolling or not, but we <laughs> talked about we talked about purpose like and, you know, that really gets me through the hard days. So there there are really, really hard days in this job. And, you know, I think as as safety professionals, it's our job to sit on be the little person on the shoulder of leadership and be their conscience. And it's and again, that's really hard because you, you can feel like you're just hitting a brick wall constantly you know because everything is a we have to prove and demonstrate constantly right but with with the data and to be able to actually produce that the 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 whole narrative has changed for us Mm -hmm. but but more than that I think whilst that's really important I think what we've seen in our business is a really deeper understanding from a leadership perspective because these these people have got so much other stuff to think about and consider, right? We get the privilege of, you know, only thinking about safety and only thinking about mental health. But yeah. senior leaders in the business have P and L, and they've they've everything else that they mm. need to, to worry about. So we to see the shift in our organisation where we've got senior leaders that are, you know, really visible around mental health, and we've got a CEO who is really visible about mental health and speaks very passionately about mental health and and has connected the dots. Now, I'm not saying we still don't have, you know, tough days with it. One million lives took us a long time to get over the line. We had um we had legal issues, we had not issues, but we had to get through uh legal sign off. Um, you know, there's there was the whole GDPR and data protection mm-hmm. um issue that issues that we had to kind of jump through. So this this platform has got all the bells and whistles on it because of that. So we probably would have been ready to launch it in 2019 had it not been for that. Um now, serendipitously, did I say that word right? Did I get yeah. it right? Because there's no <laughs> editing, I believe. <laughs> I hope I got it right. Um right. we launched in 2020, so COVID. So I think we probably launched it at a time when the business needed it most, actually. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I I, I just I, I'm so proud of what we've done and I'm so proud of the team for um for plowing through with it because there were times when we just nearly put it in the this is too hard bucket. But then we thought about the reason that we were doing it and we thought about the people that we were helping through mm-hmm. it. And we've had again, like we ran the world's biggest mental health check in last year. So we only soft launched in 2020. Um, we never did a kind of a big splash. And last year we thought we'd, we'd spoken to a couple of people external to Jacobs and 
one of them was an actually an organizational psychologist and she said she said why why am i not seeing this everywhere like it's it's not a, like you're giving it away for free this is amazing why is it not everywhere yeah. like it's clinically validated it works you're getting really good results from it you're actually helping people and um, there's organizational benefits there's individual benefits so it 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 just it 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 gels together and it works so why am i not seeing it everywhere so we came up very late last summer with the concept of the world's biggest mental health check in and that was our way of opening our arms and saying to, to everybody in our industry, saying it to people outside of the industry and and everyone all over the world, like we can't do this on our own and we want your help and we want you to get on board with it. And if you've got a tool that's similar to One Million Lives, even better, amazing. This is about us all coming together on the 10th of October making a stand having discussions about mental health and one of the things that i said last year and it, and it absolutely stands true this this campaign was never about the number of check-ins that we did the campaign was all about the conversations that happened on the 10th of october last year about mental health it was about the people who had conversations about their mental health that never had those discussions before we had an email from a man who told us that he had a chat with his wife about his mental health for the first time in 25 years and they recognised and realised together that he had an issue and he was now going to get the help that he okay. needed. We had a, a lady tell us that she had been really anxious about having a conversation about suicide with her 17 year old son. She just didn't have the language and she didn't know how to go about it. And on the back of the campaign last year, she had the confidence to sit down with him and have a really positive conversation about suicide. Like behind all of this initiatives and behind this corporate speak and all of that are real people that this campaign impacted, you know, mm -hmm. and that's like when you're stuck in the weeds of it, it's hard sometimes to appreciate what what it is and, and what it stood for last year and 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 the impact that it had so to take a stand back from it sometimes and look at you know look at these stories and remember them it's like jesus i was involved in that that's amazing because that's that's actually me because we talk about legacy all the time right what does it actually mean yeah. to have even two people out of all the people that took the check-in last year to have two people email and say this has made a difference to my life like you know and you know what big drop <laughs> it almost absolutely and it always comes right back to your is safety a mental uh, yeah. is it a, a mental game and it's those moments that you know that it absolutely is because the amount of hurdles and anyone that's I mean I can't even imagine the amount of hurdles you have had to have gone through to get to where you are the arguments about whose pots it sit in some people that might have wanted to commercialize it you fighting against that oh all. we'd had we had all that crystal absolutely like, yeah people rowing over this and then you know that it's about mental oh what's the word strength holding yeah. true to its original purpose and we like you you uh, said about what we were saying before you have to be purpose driven in this game yeah it is a mental challenge every mm. single day oh every day but when you drive through and you stay really true to where you started you get here you get yeah. to changing people's lives having conversations with 17 year olds that you've never had all your yeah. 25 years it's yeah incredible oh it's it's amazing and that's you know and it was really look it was really hard last year we did we did we did a couple of really tough weeks we started the planning process for this year's campaign a little bit earlier but now we're into the final four weeks and it's you know the pressure's starting to come on but I know that you know we're going to host two calls on the 10th of October we hosted them last year made them available internally and externally we hosted them last year nearly 10,000 people dialed into those two calls mm -hmm. like Massive. it was it just like there was over two million uses of the hashtag like this was something that we came up with and and yeah. and I was like sorry what two, what? <laughs> two million what does that even mean? Like it just, it just, <laughs> it just blew my mind. But yeah, and, and and you know, lots of things happened around those couple of weeks. We had our CEO, who's a Bob Brigada, who's amazing, and he sent an email. And this will tell you the the measure of the guy. Like I got in contact with him, little old me, and I got in contact with him. You know, CEO of of a of a of a massive organization, and asked him to reach out to um our competitor CEOs. 
And I was like, hey, Bob, I wanted to reach out to our competitor CEOs and I want you to tell them that they need to get on board with this campaign. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. I'll do that. No problem. And two weeks later, I was on a call with six CEOs of our competitor organizations. You know, it was oh, like real. Oh, unreal. 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 And Bob and Bob was like, Bob was like, are you ready? Are you ready, Fiona? Are you ready? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, like oh, you know, fair, fair play to Bob. But like, fair play to you for fucking thinking about it. And asking him to do it. Yes. Because I don't yeah. think a lot of people would have come up with that idea. Yeah. So and and you know what some 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 of the organizations most of the organizations got on board um there was a couple of organizations that just weren't, weren't quite at that level yet and yeah. like i i know how i would feel if a competitor came to me and said we're after developing this platform <laughs> and we want you to use it i mean yeah what yeah really so uh, there's you know we we had very little time last year and there were hoops that we just couldn't get through with some organizations um but this year look we are we are we want to make it bigger and better and it's a really light lift for for companies because um we've one organization that's jumping on board with us they've 120,000 um staff and I'm, we're going to just create a drop down menu for them. So when you when you register and there's no personal information when you register um we're going to give them a drop down menu so after the campaign we'll be able to just press a button and give them their data, you know, and that's amazing. That's legacy. Like yeah. and they're not in our industry. They're in a different industry. Um, and, and also what we said to companies last year was like most organizations, big organizations will have uh, plans in place for World Mental Health Day. So just do like roll out your own plans, but do it under the umbrella of the world's biggest mental health check in develop what a check-in is for your organization it might be that you're going to have a coffee morning in every you know in every office and and you're going to you're going to have a chat and get to know people or whatever whatever it is because i totally uh, cognizant. you've created the future standard you know how like you have like earth day and all of that sort yes. of stuff. imagine if what you have done is created the 10th of october every single year forever. that is what we are doing crystal that, that is, is what we are right doing now yeah. this yeah. is it let's like cement it in yeah. 10th of october yeah Incredible. because yeah and it's there's there's a part of it as well for me that like you know we talk about are you okay day which is like really big in australia or whatever yeah, and it's on it gets Thursday. a lot of yeah. it gets a lot of like ugh, take your yellow muffins and shove them um yeah because a lot of times it is very corporate very tick box and it's just yeah. a couple of banners whereas what you have developed with all of that stuff in the background and like you say the fact that companies will then have like data that they can fall back on mm. so far from a tick box thing and that again it's that forming really connect real yeah. connection between people as well i think it's on right do you know i think though that a bit of a blocker to this sometimes can be that organizations are just not ready for the data as well so that that's a you know that, that that's was, an I interesting at, one i was at um an event during the week at irish water um or Ish yes, Aaron, and, in um, yeah and it was the wellness yeah well community thing um and there is a a woman she's just published re research out of ucc and it's like the first kind of big lot of research on irish companies so yeah don't ask uk we've got our own stuff now right and um, mm. <laughs> but it was that like of the 1500 companies of whatever 10 plus employees that they surveyed 74 percent of them knew and felt that they had a responsibility and obligation around their employees mental health but it was something like nine or ten percent had budget time anything allocated yeah. so it's like there are so many companies that are so much smaller that it's like they know and they do want to do something but they have absolutely no idea where to start oh, no. and i i think some of this is like chicken and egg for organizations though mm. i think about there's a couple of separate arguments one of them is um I think people are still trying to work out how dangerous it is to get as close to people's mental health when yeah. they feel like they probably can't help. Like what happens if I know and then I can't help? That feels terrifying. Yeah. There's the struggle between the two professional um, parties that could own this in every organization. So there's absolutely um, logic that says this should sit in, in HR. There's absolutely logic that says it should sit in safety. Having had a one-to-one -one with somebody from the HSE lab who said, we don't care. <laughs> somebody own it. <laughs> somebody resource it. Somebody do something. Yeah. And actually, you know, there's the HSE are definitely going to be gearing up to come a lot closer to this. 
um, are probably going to start taking actions um, to, on companies that aren't doing anything at all. It yeah. doesn't really matter. What we actually have to do, Fiona, is take a leaf out of your book, I think, as organisations and stop bun fighting. Absolutely. Who owns it and just say, how do we work together to create a great environment where people can check in? Like you say, design whatever is a check in for your organisation, whatever yeah. that is design it get it right and get it to your people yeah so that you can be informed and i think ray way back to the off-camera moment some of this stuff is really big and scary and you're not meant to have all the answers it's not supposed to be easy otherwise we would have cracked this and done it a long time ago yeah so just face into the fact there are unknowns it's probably going to tell you something you didn't know or did and were worried about and then what you do from then is you sit down yeah. Sit down with peers or other parts of your business and say, what now? That's it. You, ne- you need to just start. Yeah. And like I've been asked that question a lot around, how, like we're a small organization. How do we, we can't possibly do what, what you guys do. And I, I don't know that I, I don't think mm-hmm. I believe that. Yeah, I do. No. You need to just start. And, and this is about leadership as well and being visible and, you know, we've all heard of people boss watch. So you're going to do what your boss does and, and he's going to do what or she's going to do what what his or her boss does. You know, it it it, it filters up and it filters down. So, uh, yeah, you, you need to just start. There's no getting away from this anymore. You know, the days of and, 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 and we know this, but the days of, you know, policies and procedures keep people safe are long, 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 long gone. Right. Yeah, yeah. But we've we 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 are we are progressing into into something that we we absolutely have to face and that's we need people mentally fit in order to make sound decisions when faced with risk we we absolutely need that do you know what i love that link that link of if you want to really understand if you want to be motivated if you're not motivated by the care of people and some people are not and that's just you know everybody is built differently you look into the who you are going to trust to make big dicey in the moment decisions when it's all hitting the fan and something's really going wrong what you really want is somebody that is completely supported mentally sound because they have somewhere to go if there is a problem yeah you know it's going to benefit the decision making in your organization and there is lots of every single department makes risk-based decisions whether it's do we spend that is there an roi are we going to do that operationally are we going to pull that lever over here and cost something over here everybody is making a risk-based decision yeah the best decisions that you will make are with people that are not struggling you know i i think i don't know anybody that's not struggled at some point with their mental health whether it be postnatal depression clinical depression like you know anxiety the whole shebang yeah great employees supported to be well will make yeah. better decisions for you they, and, and we look we we absolutely know this and there's like there's lo- there's loads of i don't know what you call them controversial aspects to to that question around is safety a mental game like i don't know are we learning enough um coming out of incidents um you know, mm-hmm. I think individuals who take calculated risks in certain circumstances, even if they deviate from kind of strict safety protocols or strict safety guidelines, you know, there's an, I was listening to something the other day that they were talking about, should should those kind of people be recognised and rewarded for their ability to make kind of quick decisions that lead to positive outcomes in some circumstances? So there's loads of kind of controversial views on this at the moment, I think, but I'll come back to like how we originally started this conversation. I think when people, and, and to your point, when people feel, when they have purpose and they feel, um, and they and they trust their organization and they trust the people around them yeah. and they're mentally well and they're, and, and they're working in an environment that allows them to be themselves, um, allows them to grow. There's so many little elements to this. I think they make better decisions, you know, and that's what we want. We want people you know, when they're faced with those risky situations to not put their hand in the line of fire and, Mm. and, and, and to look out for the people that are around them as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, I mean, we talk about that. What what am I trying to say? We expect people to look around them and to notice everybody else. If, If you are in the darkest of places 
and we've done an episode um uh, on suicide awareness uh, week last year which is coming around or I think just passed it just passed because we reshared I have absolutely been there I can't see anyone you can't see anyone but actually the more we create safe spaces for people to say are you okay this is how I have a better conversation we can yeah. pull people out of those dark places and we really can know that we are seen and we see others yeah. so it's you know I think it's a really incredible topic I would love to do a whole other episode by the way on do we learn enough from incidents that is a yeah. whole thing in itself it drives me mad because yeah. complacency in our profession and I know the word complacency is now a trigger because we've had that this week <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, but yeah exactly the amount of people um teams that I've gone in and headed up and you have to retrain people the importance of learning from negative events so that we can remove root cause do a better job and create better safer spaces yeah we, we aren't learning enough no um, so I think yeah incredible topic um, yeah all in all yeah actually. And and I'd love to um I'd love to come back after the tenth of October and let's have a chat about the results oh, from yes. the world's biggest mental health check in and let's look at um the engagement with the with the campaign because it's yeah it's going to be insane um so we I will I will def I will send you or I don't know how we'll figure out how to we have campaign materials already developed for organisations. We have the links all ready to rock. We're going to have be having two global calls on the tenth. It'd be really cool if you could dial into it. Um, and for yep. all your listeners, uh, you're more than welcome. We'd love to have you on. Um, and yeah, just let's let's all work together on this because we are stronger together, and it's the only way that we are going to make any kind of a a shift in um the mental well being of our staff. Amazing. I think yeah. I think that's probably an incredible place. Um, to wrap as we got the amazing uh, wrap up sign from Elisa about five minutes ago um, <laughs> but what we will do is I think we'll share the links so when we post yeah. this, we will share the links in the post guys um, and we will put any links to any of your campaign stuff Fiona in the description of both the podcast and the YouTube video as amazing well. and I think I'll probably just reshare it again on the 10th so even if we post it before then we'll go again that would be amazing sure yeah that'd um, be great I will definitely tell my team to get on as well what, what yeah. an incredible thing um great. Lisa, I I feel like yeah any any final thoughts from you before we wrap um geez lads we covered a lot there now um but I think for for me some takeaways is for small organizations try not to get overwhelmed mm -hmm. um a lot of the time it is actually really small things you can do that can improve just make it a better place to work just it, yeah. it's not about like you don't have to be like oh we're super unreal just fucking hell don't make it worse for people just try not to make people stay harder <laughs> start there <laughs> um and then the other point that really sticks out to me <laughs> is like where you're talking about like reach out to other businesses from what i've seen so far the only industry that managed to do this well in terms of learning from safety and helping each other is aviation the rest of us are fucking shutters down we had an incident we're not telling anyone oh they're doing this for mental health that's them not us and that it's bullshit like we need to really fucking like you say row in together and really just just improve yeah just leave leave, leave the badges at the door and yeah. leave the egos at the door and Absolutely. and this is this is the one area that we can actually authentically do that you know yeah. this is about people and we want people well um so let's just leave everything at the door and work together on it love it oh well thank you so much fiona thanks for having me for the next episode that was a blast it was it was really good <laughs> um so thank you to all our listeners as well for tuning in for this episode to speak you will see this land um and then yeah we'll follow up with the results so take care and we'll see you in a couple of weeks for the next episode bye bye everyone yeah. bye